Hello and welcome to Diplomatic Channel. This week, we're examining the United States' latest ban on certain types of visas from Nigeria, as well as five other countries, namely Eritrea, Sudan, Tanzania, Pakistan, and Myanmar. Plus, the UK has formally left the European Union. The question now is, what next? Our guests this week are former Permanent Secretary at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Ambassador Joe Keshe, who will be joining us from Abuja to discuss uh, the ban on Nigeria, and immigration lawyer, Mr. Dayo Fadino, who will be joining us from London to discuss what next after Brexit. What had circulated as a rumor for a couple of weeks now has become reality. Nigeria has been put on a list of countries with a ban on certain types of visas into the United States. Nigeria has responded with President Mahmoud Buhari promising to work to fix security lapses that led to the ban in the first place, as he wants Nigeria to have productive relations with the U.S. He's also appointed a minister to lead a committee to study and address the new visa requirements. But here's how the U.S. government arrived at the conclusion Nigeria should be on the list in the first place. Africa's most populous nation has been on the radar of the U.S. government for a while now despite having strong economic and security-related ties to the United States. Last year, the Department of Homeland Security completed a review of countries evaluating whether the entry of their nationals into the United States could cause a public safety threat. It examined each country's ability to verify identity of its own nationals, information sharing practices with the United States, and possible terror or public safety risks. They then attempted to work with the countries to remedy outstanding issues, which ended up removing some countries from consideration. That was when the Trump administration decided the countries would be subjected to the visa restrictions. Illegal immigration has been a major target for the Trump administration, and the State Department once noted in 2018 that Nigerians made one of the highest number of citizens who overstayed their short-term visas to remain permanently in the United States. It said it was working modalities to curb the problem. Intention to curb the problem has probably led to the modification of visa policy towards Nigeria and other countries. According to a Quartz analysis of U.S. Census Bureau data, Africa has the fastest growing number of immigrants in the United States as the number of African migrants grew at a rate of almost 50 percent from 2010 to 2018, Nigerians remain the largest population group of African migrants in the U.S. And last year, the curb on Nigerians emigrating to the U.S. began. First was the reciprocity fee payable at the U.S. Embassy after visa interviews. Then, a couple of weeks into the new year, a visa ban was announced aimed at curbing birth tourism to the United States, which the Trump administration said posed risks to national security. The U.S. president once expressed a desire to have more immigrants from developed countries and less from developing countries, a move he believes would be beneficial to the United States. I want to bring in former Permanent Secretary at the Nigeria Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Ambassador Joe Keshi, who joins us now from our studio in Abuja. Ambassador Keshi, thank you for joining us on the program. Rumors of Nigeria being on the list of countries under the visa ban had been circulating for a while now, and President Trump has said in Davos he was considering adding some more countries on the list. How do you think that this reflects on Nigeria as a strategic partner of the United States? You, you will recall that sometimes in one of our conversations, one of our interviews, I had actually said to you that I'm not one of those who subscribe to this whole question and slogan of Nigeria being strategic partner to the United States or United States being a strategic partner. And I think this actually basically confirmed, you know, my position. <clears throat> you don't you don't treat a strategic partner the way the U.S. sometimes uh, treats us. When you do a proper empirical analysis, compare the way, for example, Saudi Arabia is treated or compare the way Egypt is treated, you begin to wonder how exactly are we so strategic to the U.S. 
Yeah, the, the U.S. might be strategic to us because it's a superpower and because there are a couple of things we need from the U.S. But from the U.S., I'm not even sure that they themselves are serious when they describe us as uh, strategic partners. And I keep saying this, that the evidence on the ground does just justify that. From time, is it during the Civil War, the U.S. was not on our side? When we were in Liberia and Sierra Leone, the U.S. basically refused to sell some, some critical, you know, uh, arsenals to us. Is it because they gave us uh, some assistance for elections? But they don't talk to elections to Egypt or to Saudi Arabia. Is it because they help uh, a number of NGOs feed on the U.S. in this country? Is that how you define strategic partners? Let's do a serious analysis of how they treat strategic partners and how the U.S. treats us when it decides to treat us. Okay, uh, since, since we're going down that road, you do believe that Nigeria is not a strategic partner of the U.S. in Africa. But when you also look at the reasons uh, for the ban, they say non-compliance with the established identity management and information sharing criteria under which the U.S. now considers Nigeria a threat to public safety or Nigerians a threat to public safety and national security. First of all, do you think this is a clear assessment of Nigerians and, you know, the way they've conducted themselves in the U.S. and the way Nigeria has conducted itself with the United States? And is it a reflection of a kind of relationship that exists between the two, um, especially, you know, uh, in, in view of this visa ban? Look, uh, Amarachi, when you look at the reasons given by the United States, you could actually identify a number of institutions in this country possibly responsible for, for the ban. Why did the United States not decide and say, we will no longer cooperate with these institutions, we will no longer provide assistance to these institutions. We no longer cooperate with the security forces. We no longer help the Nigerian army for the simple reason because they failed to do A, B, C, D. But you now impose a ban on the whole country, on people who are not responsible for whatever, you know, uh, complaints you have against Nigeria. There are so many things they could have done if there are no other motivation or reasons for this. You look at the whole reasons here. I mean, you just enumerated all the reasons they gave. Why didn't they decide that we will no longer provide assistance which they've been given to some of these institutions? We will no longer cooperate and share information with some of these institutions. But you decided to add us, you know, among a whole pack of countries for whatever reason. You, look, we are not... The fact that we, we are confronting terrorism does not necessarily make us a terrorist state. And only some sections of this country are affected by terrorism. So you can't just get up and convince me that, um, you know, this is all about not providing information or this is because we are not doing A, B, C, D. And I repeat, you could have imposed sanctions, decided to say we will no longer share information, we will no longer assist the immigration department if they are responsible, or we no longer cooperate with the Nigerian security agencies. And then we can understand, you know, the reasons for, for, for this. But as it is, it's a blanket ban that, you know, those seeking for uh, immigrant visa can no longer enter the United States. What did they do? Practically nothing. Innocent citizens. You, you, you think it's also an excuse by the Trump administration to... Uh, regulate immigration into the U.S. I know the government has complained in the past that you have people coming in and overstaying their visas, and the State Department did say they would look into it and will come up with measures to curb this. Look, you, you think this is part of it? All, all over the, am I right? All over the world, people overstay their visas, and people don't. A whole nation do not get punished for the, you know for the misbehavior of a few of its, uh, if a few of its, uh, of its citizens. So, but look, you just said it, from day one, didn't President Trump once tell us that he would rather prefer people from the Scandinavian mm. countries than people from, <laughs> say, Nigeria and a number of, uh, you know, Muslim countries migrating to the United States? And this is exactly what the president is doing. So, 
You, they, look, if you, want to, if you want to crucify anybody, you can find any excuse in the world to take out that person. So, if you, look, there's, for me, there's actually no justification. Then how do you react to President Buhari's response saying uh, a committee will be set up to look into these loopholes? Well, on one hand, uh, I guess <laughs> we can actually say, thank God the president has responded positively by setting up a committee. The president's action, good as it might be for, you know, for now, raises the question, and this is something that we should demand answers from. Did the United States make these demands to uh, some of our institutions on the basis of cooperation and on the basis of exchange of information? And what was the reason why we did not respond or why we failed to respond? And, and I think when people are held accountable for failing to do the right thing and the whole nation you know, is affected, I think that is when we will, you know, when we would, um, you know, when we begin to, you know, to, to do things properly in this country. The second issue, of course, is that, again, look, at the end of the day, I probably would not blame the United States. I've always made the point that if we as a nation over the years have actually grown as adults, if we have become a developed nation, Nigerians will not be too enthusiastic to leave this country. This is a beautiful country at the end of the day. Knowing fully well that Donald Trump would, would not consider Nigerians because Nigerians would not be trooping out of, the, out of this country. But as long as, again, I make the point, we refuse to grow up into adulthood. You know, many Nigerians will continue to want to leave this country to where opportunities are better and where life is appreciated and the people are treated with respect, fairness, justice, and equity. Ambassador Keshi, thank you again for speaking with us on Diplomatic Channel. Pleasure having you on the program. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thanks.